Well, let's move along. We got dynamite to do. Let's do that. Oh, we'll yeah. call it a night. Okay. Let's do dynamite. Let's run through dynamite. So this is October 18th now, Wednesday. That's a couple of days ago. And we start this mm -hmm. one with uh, Penta, El Cero Miedo, against yeah. uh, Jay White, the AW yeah. World Heavyweight Champion. And <laughs> Tony, Schiavone, Tony Schiavone, who was on Collision, by the way, we didn't really mention that. I thought that was interesting no. that he got added to the Collision crew. But So he's on both shows now. But he's really laying it in thick with the uh, hatred for Bullet Club Gold because he's the MJF guy now. So you could hear him talking about how these guys are just bad people. Bad. They're bad. They're just bad. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, so their uh, Penta started off with a dive, obviously. I think they got to do that. He didn't even hit Jay White, to. though. He hit everyone no. else but Jay White. Um, this was this was the booking. Okay, I don't know about the booking these two. The only thing I'll say, again, same thing like Collision. At least it gives the Bullet Club goal a chance to, you know, show their personality, mess with the guys, <laughs> taunt them when they fall out of the ring. Okay. Also, the fact that it's Penta and Jay White, they're very athletic, so they could do, like, a lot of moves that um, a lot of people can't do. But this move in particular... I think was a false finish for which was a false finish for Jay White kicked out. But if you look at this move again, man, this would have been like a cruiserweight move, like in a WCW match. But this is the ending. This if you pull this off, the crowd is gonna go, oh shit, and that's a three count. Okay, that's a fine move to do, but that should be the end of the match. If you're gonna do something that wicked, then don't do it. If it's gonna be a kick out, don't do it. Um, so this is a, this is a situation where I think they're just kind of. This match was a little too long. I think it didn't have to be. Um, so Bullet Club Gold, though, they do win with interference. So this is the part where Bullet Club, at least, they distract the ref. And, and mm. Juice Robinson nails Penta with uh, the ring, I think. It left the left hand of God, they call it. And um, so that's a three count. Jay White wins. Yeah. Bullet Club starting the show off. Um, this is going to be another promo, though. Another promo that MJF doesn't come out and rebuke because he can't it's just four on one and uh jay jay white and juice get a chance to talk i liked juice more than jay white probably because uh you know he's For taunting sure. he's still still taunting mjf he's gonna take that ring from him that's what he's, he's doing so i i like that they put him in this spot to take the diamond ring i think that's a good booking okay that's cool because they're all involved together so so far uh yeah i didn't really want to see penta versus jay white but okay let's see what else they got going on i don't know you want to rip let's the booking see. or no do you want to rip the book no no it's not you don't want to say it, it no. was horrible you know it, it was it was okay it was whatever you know they had i i didn't like well, the match in particular i i didn't think it was a good match but no it was not it was your typical match that you would get with penta or ray phoenix you know ray phoenix no. Um, oh yeah, either one. Yeah, you say that you're saying they're one. the same. Yeah, okay. It's, it, well, yeah, they wrestled the same style. How about that? Well, let's see what came up later on the show. We got. Uh, sorry. Oh, MJF. He was in the back, so he was watching the whole time, and uh, he's uh, he's like saying, "I'm not gonna go out there and be stupid and get my ass beat, things like that." And I think the acclaims come and he offers to help them and. Then they can scissor afterwards, you know? <laughs> like, oh, <okay. laughs> MJF didn't accept, obviously. And, uh, oh, he was, yeah, that's how it ended. He said that he's going to enter that Dynamite Diamond Ring Battle Royal, and MJF is going to have to put a ring on it. So MJF left, because that was a gay thing to say, I guess. <laughs> but uh, these guys... Uh I don't know. Just, yeah, these guys are. I don't, uh, I, don't know what we're, I don't know what the hell we're doing anymore. So With they MJF. say MJF, that guy's a scumbag, and um, and and you're like, saying that's my scumbag. You stay in, you're saying that MJF should stay in this company. I didn't say he should. Company? I said I heard he's going to. I see. So. No. Okay, he must know something I don't. He must see something that I don't see. So this, I don't. I was trying to explain how this segment ended. It was a little cringe where Billy Gunn said, "Man, oh, yeah. what a scumbag!" And Max Caster goes, "Yeah, but he's my scumbag." So okay, um, 
This is a little. This is. Uh, this is, I, okay, is this, I'll, I'll is this lame? This, but, is this lame? Yeah, this is the. This is terrible. This, this is, is lame. Know how, this is lame, lame wrestling. <laughs> this is very bad. Lame. Terrible. Awful. Anything <laughs> negative that you could. Any words you want to use to describe this? This is. This is dumb. This is silly. This is ridiculous. Why is this on air? You know, all these things. Like well, this the, has been know. their gimmick for a long time now, and it's been over. But why is MJF involved in this crap? Is, why they you don't want to get him involved in an over gimmick? This is such a... No, they're not over anymore. They've completely been cooled off. Nobody cares about Acclaimed anymore. Nobody. Zero people care about Acclaimed right now. They have... The, That's they, not true. I mean, absolutely. They mean, you got one right little. here. At least one. <laughs> All right, go, 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 okay, go scissor yourself with that comment. You know, I, no, but for real, I, I, I mean, I think they, they, they mean as as little as they've ever meant. They meant something when they were the world, the tag team champions, not these trio silly titles. Um, you know, and that's it. They, they got themselves over, but it, that time has passed, and they're completely, they're completely cold right now, completely. So Sheeta, she also has a video package for explaining oh how she God. won the women's title. Um, and they move on from that into a match with her and Emi Sakura, who oh is the trainer of a lot of these Japanese girls, I guess. And that's what she's mm -hmm. known for, that she's and the that's, master. And, 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 that's, and that's, if she's the trainer, can you imagine? How yes. Those, I've never really been project. a fan of Emi Sakura's work in AEW. I think she's okay, but... I think she's a little. I think she's a little. Yeah. She, she she's one of those where you you say she's too small to kind of make it look realistic. Like she could do the moves, but you know I just don't think it's realistic. You know you you don't really want to make Sheeta look like she's having a tough time beating this girl. You know. I but agree. anyway, and this went and this went kind of long. So she did have. A yes, tough time this did go kind of long because I'm about to skip nine minutes right here to the end of the match, and she did win so i think no surprises yeah. there so this is completely filler and bad this booking Very is bad. bad i want to rip this booking tony khan i'm having a bad time in my life i need better wrestling than this to cheer me up okay you mean you need more than emmy sakura i need more than emmy sakura versus hikaru shida come on give me something at least give me an angle built up to this have emmy sakura beat her up in the back and lead her lead into a, a better match. This was just a cold, useless match just to fill time. Absolutely. Um, very bad filler what booking. What, what more can I say? That, yeah, that's it. So you got I'm, I'm going to rip this one as bad as... The worst match on the last card was Keith Lee's squash match, but this one was... Yeah. This is worse than that. But I'm going to skip uh, Possibly. ahead. Possibly. Okay, so Christian here has this really long sit-down that was pre-recorded. So that's another a bad a thing. Well, Edge or Adam Copeland. You said Christian, but nonetheless. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, thanks for correcting me. Sometimes it's, no, no. sometimes my brain is all jumbled up. But anyways, I've, yes, you're right. No. Adam Copeland, Edge, as, as Edge. he used to be known. I like calling him Edge just because I can't believe if you'd um, – have a, an opportunity to call yourself anything you'd call yourself just your real name like i, I wouldn't if, if i was a wrestler i wouldn't go on there and be like yeah i'm k han barab dude i wouldn't that's not cool i would be like the murderous destroyer or something you know make something up uh, that you could make anything cool up that you want adam copeland come on okay not creative but um so he has this long ass sit down interview man and this was so long i had a hard time i mean there was some useful information in it based for christian and his life and their feud that is ongoing sure. but good god um this was so boring uh this, <laughs> th th it's so dark where are they sitting they're not sitting anywhere interesting it looks like they're in the back again of some yeah uh, the boiler room yeah so this this looks horrible all the way through this just makes edge sure. look like uh he's joined amateur hour and in, in wwe he has. in AEW. Oh, yeah. excuse me so um he has. okay so I'll criticize this segment. Too long, too long, okay? People are fucking at the stadium, and they got to sit for five minutes and watch Adam Copeland sit-down interview. Ugh. Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rip well, on this. No, well, you know, I, 
I, I don't completely agree, but I com sort of agree. I mean, I agree that obviously it looks like they're in some sort of warehouse, some disastrous zone. It looks like a tornado hit that place. But as far as like him kind of explaining that, his, I mean, some people probably already know, obviously, the history of Christian and Edge. But for those that didn't, you know, this was kind of beneficial. You know, he gave his side of things and whatnot. Obviously, though, we said on our previous show that we kind of agree with Christian. Uh, that like what what is what is he talking about, dude? Like he just wants to be tag teams again? Like no, bro. Like what are you, what are you even what are you even talking about? You know. So you know we both kind of sided with Christian, uh, but at, at the same time, this wasn't that bad. Like I don't think this was like a complete waste of time. Like some other things. You no, know? it wasn't a complete waste of time. But they could have put this on YouTube. This could have been like before Dynamite. Sure. They could have posted it there. They could have. It could have been like a thing. Excalibur said, hey, you know, they did this long, extensive interview with Adam Copeland on YouTube. Mm, Check yeah. it out. It explains a lot. Okay. I didn't need to sit for five minutes and watch this. The fans at the stadium don't need to sit for five minutes and watch this. <laughs> Let's move along. Uh, we got – oh, what did he – he did say something at the end that was useful, though, that he, he thinks all his friends are oh, going to drop remember. off at the end. Oh, that's right. Well, he, and that well, he he'll that be before. there. To be his friend. Yes, that's right. So that's right. That's right. He did, but he said that before that that uh, Nick Wayne and Luchasaurus are going to turn on him. That would be crazy. Okay, so Wardlow's here. This is another horrible squash match against the yeah. Hollywood Hunk Ryan Nemeth, who actually made an appearance on our show. We talked about him <laughs> weirdly <laughs> enough a couple weeks ago, but here he we is t taking the squash from. Uh, from Wardlow, he's going to get powerbombed, and there's going to be a ref stoppage because this is just too oh. violent. This is too That's violent. Right. Um, it's too much. I it's mean, I, they should cut away from the the show and go to commercials because this is just That's right. for kids. They should have brought in. <laughs> they should have brought in like some uh, like hospital people, you know, some doctors, and like took him out on a stretcher, and then like, oh, we got to cut. We, we can't show this. This is too graphic. He's all screwed up and stuff. All right. You know? Well, look, we get it. This is dumb. But this yeah. would have been a completely useful, seg useless segment if it wasn't for this ending part, which is Tony Schiavone coming out and uh, talking to Wardlow, asking him, what's your deal? And M and he has a MJF written on his wristband. So he wants MJF, I guess, which is interesting. So that throws another card into – uh, the deck of people who want MJF's title, which is Samoa Joe, and I guess Wardlow and Jay White now. So he's got a lot on his plate. Yep. I think that's interesting. I mean, if it was anything else, I would have been like, fuck this, like, fuck Wardlow being involved, even if they don't have anything other. And he did push Shivani on the way out. So Shivani took a bump. But uh, okay. sort of. He took, uh, he, if you want to call that a bump, that he did. He, he, he fell he, down. I guess, if... <laughs> okay. It was a bump. It was a bump. Yeah. All right. Yeah. The, so, okay. Um, let's move on, though. Uh, we'll see what happens with that if they're actually going to go there. But uh, so Kenny Omega is right here. Um, what the heck did he talk about? I don't remember. Well, he asked that match with Fletcher, so he probably talked about that. Talked about Don Callis, maybe in his. Oh, I remember what happened here. No, this is Why useful no? because. MJF comes MJF out. From, that's right. I know. I know. I forgot right, about yeah. that because I don't have my notes with me. I'm just skipping around on the show. So sure. MJF, the babe, the ultimate baby face uh, of the show, comes to uh, show respect to Omega. But then, right when he's leaving and he's going to shake his hand, he pulls and he goes into his ear and whispers, "I forgot how many days. Like what? Thirteen days, bitch. Thirteen some days. Shit, 13 some days. shit yeah. like that. And um, so that's a pretty heel thing to do." Okay, so uh, the guy who was just, um, you, you know. know though, I didn't know what the hell he was talking about, and I swear I, I wouldn't have until I somehow I just got something on my Facebook thing that said what he meant, which was, I guess, that in 13 days he'll surpass his title reign. So who knows this? Who would know that? They've never talked about the reign. They've never even mentioned this. So it's weird that they use this in the segment. I don't know. I found that kind of odd. I found that very odd. It's like this has been discussed or talked about previously, like his reign or he's the, he, 
he's going to surpass Kenny Omega's reign. Like, this never has even been brought up on their show before until this. Did you know what he meant, like, when he said it? Because how, and how could you know? Because I had no idea what he was talking about when he said it. No, I don't know. Yes. Again, I think it showed up on my feed on some social media, like, yeah, what the hell they were talking exactly. about. So I wouldn't have known otherwise. And what, what does that mean? Said, They're gonna oh, have a match before the 13 days are up or something? Can they squeeze in Kenny uh, Omega versus MJF? Maybe next. I don't know. Uh, Rampage <laughs> or week. something. Yeah, and, I uh, guess they're going to have to. <laughs> <laughs> on Rampage? <laughs> what, <the> world title? <laughs> well, they, they don't have a lot of time on these other shows, but they gotta. They have They have very important <laughs> squash <can't>, matches. <laughs> they, can't, they can't find time for MJF versus Kenny Omega for the world title anywhere? Well, look, if MJF... <laughs> they, got, they got squash <laughs> matches, too. <laughs> they got moved over by the squash matches. But yeah, look, yeah, yeah. We, have to, we have to hold this match for next time because there's too many squash matches this week. The only thing I'll say about this is if they do end up squeezing in MJF versus Kenny Omega, that leads another uh, clue into my theory of him leaving in 2024 because they got to squeeze in as many of these superstar fights that they could before he leaves. So he'll drop the diamond ring, he'll lose, or he'll fight Kenny Omega, have that match, and... Uh, I don't, know, I don't know where he's going to lose the title, but this is all con- considering that he's going to leave. So I, I don't know. Right. That's... If he ends up leaving, yes, this, they might if, want him to get If they know his, he's him. leaving, yeah, they might want him to have a match with Kenny Omega. So I don't know what's yeah, going to happen yeah. with that. Why would they do this segment? Um, Unless it leads in that to something, case. right? Hey, by the, way, something. by the way, something I forgot to mention in the previous segment, in the Wardlow segment, uh, yeah. I was going to mention it earlier, but I, it slipped my mind. But how about um, Wardlow for the guy who had the uh, mask, the, the secret attackers, oh. I guess? Didn't seem like it was him. It didn't seem like that like a big guy. I didn't see any like huge muscle-bound big guy. But I guess they could always... Yeah, it doesn't really say matter. It was, if say, it's... say it was him. Yeah, it doesn't know, matter if it's that perfect, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. You're right. It could be word look, I guess. I still think it's either um who did I say? I I think it's either uh I, I think it could end up being what's it called? That what's oh my god. Well, you know, Roddy and Adam and the what's that tag The Kingdom. The Kingdom, the Kingdom, excuse me. Roddy and that. Adam and the Kingdom. Yeah. I think it could Those be them. Guys. I get I guess it could also be Christian, no, no, Christian, no, but what since would Christian be involved? No, no, it, had, it could only be, uh, it could only be Adam and, it, so uh, that's my prediction of who it is, yeah. It, eventually, Adam is going to do something. But well, maybe now it's being, now it's being held back because Adam is injured, you know, so, so that's been put on hold. Well, speaking of uh, Adam Cole and Roderick Strong and the yeah. kingdom, uh, Adam Cole is still trapped in Roderick Strong's house, so he hasn't been able to leave for the past couple weeks. Um, today he's making uh, peanut butter. Oh, he brought him coffee, made him some PB and J peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. They said Adam Cole makes the best PB and J, um, and mm-hmm. he didn't. He didn't take off the crust though, so that's when Roderick Strong really got mad. And then Adam Cole blew up finally. He's like, I haven't left. And all this time, and I don't know what's going on with Max, and I'm leaving, and I don't care what you say. And okay, so this consensus, I think, I even bumped into Brian at the bar earlier today, and he said, This mm. is the stupidest shit ever. And oh, yeah, pissed off about it. So let's yeah, rip on this. Too. Okay, so I've had all this mm. anger built up for at least. Oh, you go ahead. You go ahead. Because I've already been, I've been saying it for weeks how this is the dumbest thing. Well, unless, and, unless these guys are swerving everybody like can it make sense if they're the bad guys like you're saying if they're the ones who well, actually... they are the bad guys but the problem is is adam involved and i'm gonna say well, probably the, is well they're throwing the adam is but throwing they... everybody off he's 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 like you know but, but wasting time even, but now we can't even get to it because like i said what what are they if he's legitimately injured and he needs surgery i think he's he's, he's had the that. surgery bro he's had the surgery this is this oh, is that. Well, you mean th- you mean in reality he's had? Yeah. Sure. In reality I mean, he's had the surgery. Yeah, I, he's recovered. I agree. 
Yeah, I agree. I don't know how long is all this is supposed to take. A couple months that they're trying to stall for him to be able to come back or something. Months, I would assume. So maybe that's why he's trapped at Roddy's house this whole time because it's just it's just a a storyline thing that they can't they can't uh, figure anything out to 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 prolong this and postpone it. So they're just he's trapped at. No, but these segments are really stupid. No, because I think they were doing these type of. Yeah, they were doing these stupid segments prior to his injury, so it's not just that. Well, even the stuff he was doing with MJF, we both said, and I think in one of them, as you mentioned, Brian was also in. Uh, we're actually here when we reviewed one of those segments where they were somewhere. I forgot where the hell they were in that segment, and we all took a man said this was dumb and, and ridiculous and beneath MJF. So as the world champion to be involved in this type of stuff. Now, I know that's what you're going to say. He's not involved in the specific segments now, but he is kind of involved with this whole angle, you know, and he's made to look dumb. And everybody involved is made to look ridiculously and, and dumb and, and, you know, and things like that. I mean, I wanted to say that they're they're done. Like, they've completely ruined all these guys, but it's AW and it's modern wrestling and, just never know but in the old days it, that this would have been like a death name this would have been like uh, these guys are boy they put they hit them with a shovel and, and literally are burying them you know because this is ridiculous nobody's gonna take these guys seriously after this well i'll just say that i think i'll criticize the fact that these segments are so repetitive every week they're still at adam's house how long have they at roderick roderick strong's house how many They've weeks? They've been there for a month. They've been there for Yeah, so that's why months. this is just getting freaking ridiculous, man. It, it, I'm all for ridiculous. I need surgery. I'm going to be, I got to get out of here. And then every other second he's still there. And they're making, they're playing around and he's making sandwiches. They're playing with I'm giraffes. All, they're play- I'm all they're for, uh, yeah, man. I'm all for silliness and wrestling, but this is yeah. bad repetitive silliness. Um, yeah. I guess, and um, and it's not even funny. It's not even good. It's like you know how some people were like whatever. I remember there was like that segment they they with Daniel Bryan and Kane when they were a tag team and how they used a lot of humor in their backstage segments and they and skits that they had. But that was actually kind of pretty funny. I would say this is just not funny, stupid, and ridiculous and just awful. You know. You know, some things are actually funny, like the stuff with Kane and, and Danielson. This is not at all. This is not at all. All right. Well, wait, let's move on. I, know, I can see you're getting tired. It's already 11 p.m., but let's yeah, – uh, all right. We can, definitely. I'm all let's, right. I'm good to go. Let's run through the rest of this episode and give it a grade and go home. Um, let's see what else happened. Um, so, that okay, the next – okay, this is something useful. Okay, so this – so far this show has been had – Nothing, basically. Yeah. But Don Callis family comes out. I like this segment. I'll just say that yeah. straight off the bat. He introduces Hobbs. The one thing about the Hobbs promo, though, when he mentioned about Jericho stiffing him and his mom for an autograph when they were when he was a kid, like that was cool. But how about we hear that like before they actually had a match, so that we would have cared about their match? Okay, mm-hmm. that's the one thing I'll say about that. But very good point. Good point. Not a bad promo though. A little weird on no. the camera angle. I don't know why they're like to the side and Yeah, you know. I don't know. And the same thing when Callus was talking. He's kinda of pointing straight at the crowd with the camera angles like to okay. the side. Yeah. It's a little confusing. But his promo was good because I liked yeah. I liked the point he made about you know, most people would tell Hobbs to bottle up that anger, bottle up that hate, but that's not what family does. Family tells you to be who you are. And uh, <laughs> I actually thought that was a very poignant point. I was like, wow, that's actually kind of nice. Um, so they're a cool little tight-knit group now, Takeshita, Hobbs, Sammy. But what did uh... – <laughs> Callis here just sounds <laughs> – he looks hilarious. But um, I think he did mention that the, they've been undefeated for like the good stretch of three or four months or something, except for yeah. Kyle Fletcher losing That's one right. match or something like that. And because uh, uh, him and Will Ospreay have like a loose affiliation, so they used right. Kyle Fletcher once. And I think Kyle Fletcher got offended and it came out immediately and kind of got in their faces and he got on the mic. So you see, at least we knew. This is why I can't criticize 
Fletcher having a match on Collision because at least this is a guy that we've we've seen recently now. So this um, isn't as bad. Takes the mic from uh, Don Callis, cuts the promo, tells him, "Hey, I was doing a you guys a favor. You guys were desperate. You asked us to to help, and we tried to help." And then he did mention how he's going to fight Kenny Omega tonight and take him out. So Don Callis is like, "Fine, let's wait and see." And that's what happened next. Omega versus Fletcher. So this is not a terrible match. Okay, I can't really dock this as like a, you know, squash match type of thing. Or no. Waste, waste uh, it of wasn't time. A, it wasn't a squash. This is a decent Well, they had booking. a competitive match, so of course it wasn't a squash. Um, so the work in this match, there was a lot. I like how Omega sells. I think I've told you that before. It's my favorite thing about him. I think, uh, I, I think it's his best attribute other than his high flying stuff or whatever but um for the match overall i I don't really know what i could say about it i think there was see that's another move a a heavy move kenny omega just took to the head just for a dynamite match you know what i mean god he takes a lot of damage i'm sure he's gonna be one of those older guys that are in a lot of pain you know i don't think he should be doing a lot of this anymore um but he, he did look good this was a little good combo at the end he's got a V trigger, reverse hurricane Rana. And oh, then... I hate that. I hate that. But okay, continue. <laughs> Power no bomb. And then I another V trigger. Look, this made him look like a superhero. Like that little move set right there, four straight moves. I think that should have been the pinfall right there. But um, you know, sometimes he looks pretty good. He flies around. He looks like an athlete. But in the end, uh, well, okay, so there was a reversal of his. One winged angel got got put in a submission that he had to fight out of, but in the end, I think he does uh, gets him in in the the one winged angel, and he wins the match. So, mm-hmm. I mean, this is something. Oh, this is the final combination. Okay, so I guess this is something to criticize because this is the one spot where you could actually tell. I'll rewind it, but look. So there's a snap suplex, not sold. So here's a kick, mm. not sold again. So mm. he's gonna run the ropes. Uh, this V trigger he's going to hit him with is really good. And then he sells that to the moon. So they pick and choose what they sell. The psychology sure. is not really uh, perfect or spot on. Of course. But they're goes... they're fun to watch. I'm sure when you're there, they look like really cool wrestlers. But okay. As you know, a, as this, a... was, this wasn't bad. I mean, there had some, they had a pretty solid match. I don't remember anything like, you know, usually Omega's matches are ridiculous or silly. I mean, yeah, there's some of that, as you, we pointed out. But for the most part, this was actually a solid match. And, you know, I, I think for, I don't know, maybe Omega now, because he's getting a bit beat up and he's a bit older. He, I mean, yeah, he takes some crazy spots, like like tombstones and all these crazy uh, Tiger Drivers 99s where he gets planted on his head. But for the most part, he doesn't do a lot of the high flying as much as he used to. Uh, so I think that saves some of his matches, makes it look a little better, to be honest with you. So I thought this was a good match. I thought this was solid. You know, he is, yeah, he can he can be a strong worker when he's not doing dumb stuff. And of course, he's usually good when he's working with like other really good guys. I mean, not that Fletcher's a good one of those guys, but you know, he's not Fletcher's not bad in himself. Yeah, th- I just had like minor quibbles about this match. I thought it was an yes. all right match, but okay. So this for the storyline, uh, Don Callis was not so fa- happy that uh, Fletcher didn't win, but we didn't really get much after that regarding this whole thing. I think it moved on to another Downhausen video. It looks like the same one we saw from Saturday. I think so. I don't know if there's any like it. differences. It's because I'm not watching close enough. <laughs> so someone might say like, "Don't you notice this?" Or maybe there might be some hidden message. I I don't. Who know. gives a shit? Did you notice this? Did you notice that? Get out of here. Get this off my screen. Uh, The next match. Oh, my God. Okay, this is another weird booking. The Murderhawk monster, Lance Archer's back. He used to beat up on job <sighs> guys. So this was his thing. So he's he's rolling his opponent down to the ring to destroy him. So, yeah. okay. So we had a Wardlow squash earlier. Uh, yeah. Lance Archer squash. This is bad. This is bad. We've already seen Lance Archer. Maybe enough time has passed where people can forget about him, but they totally yeah. screwed him up last time. Yeah. And <laughs> if they're planning on using him, I hope they're not. See, that's why like I can't even say anything good about this. Like I, 
no. you know, okay, no. at least it's the start of making him look good. Like, no, you don't want to make this guy look good, dude. This is this is terrible. I'm that ripping this. That ship has sailed. That yes. ship has sailed. Fuck this. Okay. I'm kind of mad Absolutely. about this. I'm probably it's mad insane. about other things in my life, but I'm just I'm projecting no, it onto this. this. Is, well, yeah, you are <laughs> mad at other things in your life, as many of us are, but this is awful. This is awful. <laughs> this is terrible. Okay. Fuck this. Let's move on. Um, yeah. Okay, so Swerve, he's going to introduce his new music video for his song, I Swerve When I Drive, um, his, right. theme, his theme song entrance. So he's cutting a promo somewhere, and I forgot where they were, some some spot that had some significance for them or something. But yeah, he's not. he says he's not happy. Prince Nana is, like, trying to hype him up, and he's like, I'm, if, I, I should be this happy, but I'm not. And he's mad that Hangman Page has been messing with him since their match at Wrestle Dream. And he's saying it wasn't personal at first, it was just for a spot at first, but now it's personal because you're messing with me. So they're going to continue that. Which I was a little kind of upset. Something that I criticized last week that I was like, why why, are, you know, why is that continuing? Hangman Page yeah. hasn't explained why he's continuing to mess with Strickland, but okay. I don't know. This is a criticism for me, too. I don't think they should be having this feud. I think I like Swerve, like how he acts. I like. I think he's showing a lot of pers personality here and such, but it's just misdirected towards this angle. You want to say anything about this? No. I know you don't like not this really. angle overall, but no, fine. Not really. We'll move on. Not worth Vlad's effort to even speak. Damn. No, it's, it's cool. <laughs> okay, so... <laughs> Excuse me. Here's a, another important segment, I guess. This made news. Yeah. This made headlines. Uh, Sting asked for time on the air, cut a promo, talked about a lot of things, thanked a lot of people, which made people start to kind of wonder if he's about to retire. Thanked Hogan, mm -hmm. which was funky. Hogan got some booze. Thanked yeah. Ric Flair, which I think Ric Flair had. I don't know if he'd been mentioned yet on AWTV. I forgot who else he Sting, mentioned. Sting, Sting had mentioned him before. Dusty Rhodes, he mentioned. And he mentions that Revolution, right? Is that January yeah. 2024? It's gonna I be, think so. It's going to be his last match. So I don't right. know if that's going to be a tag match or a singles match. But do you think that's significant, Vlad? And he did say it's for sure. You know, because, you know, it's never been for sure with Sting. Nothing's for yeah. sure. But this right, is for right. sure. This... Okay. <laughs> For sure. The one thing for okay. sure is that this now is for sure. This is my last match. Right here. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, is it significant? I mean, in a sense, yes. I mean, it, you know, for us that grew up watching Sting, I guess it's significant. How significant it is for the AW modern crowd, I don't know. I mean, at this point, it, it probably makes the most sense he's plus it won't probably won't even be good though will it can it be good or no, is, it's just a goodbye it it's just a goodbye i don't think there's any way it could be good there's very little way it could be good you know but you know sting has done what he can do and he should walk out before he has they, he's does something crazy again and cripples himself you know right he jumps off the like the ropes onto tables or he jumps off ramps. I mean, it's insane what this guy's well, doing. Well, what do you think the match should be? You think him and Darby against Christian and Luchasaurus or Christian and Nick Wayne? Or I, don't, uh, I honestly don't know. Singles match? Honest. Him against? I think it should be a singles. If it's his last match, it should be a single. But against Christian or something? Or I, I have no idea right now who he could face. It's I have I don't know. I know he's involved with Christian. Luchasaurus is that what it's going to end up being? But you know, it could be totally different by by January of next uh, of next year. So I don't know. I can't tell you who sh who in that company he should face as his last match. I don't. I don't even know, man. All right. Well, let's move along. Um, oh well, what do I think of this? I think um, yeah. I mean, it's nice that we got to see a little extra sting because I think. We all thought he was going to retire back when he got hurt in WWE, but he yeah. rallied, rehabbed, he looked good. There wasn't really much for him to do in this company. I liked some of it, I guess. It was always crazy to see him fly, but we don't really want him to do that, you know, but okay. 
Um, yeah, I don't know. I hope they could come up with something good for the final match, you know, because I think he could pull it off, but they got to come up with some right. kind of angle here. But we'll see. Yeah. I guess it would, it would we'll be see. cool if it was Christian, but I think it's going to be a tag team match. I don't think he's going to go out there one-on-one -on -one for his last match. But Sure. Well, you're probably right. All right, let's see what comes up next. Uh, another Tony Storm thing. Okay, so this time it, it's in picture in picture. I couldn't really watch it. I didn't I really did want to pay attention to it. I mean, she's I great. Not. I'm not – I think she's beautiful, you know, and everything, and she's very attractive. <laughs> but I'm not that big a fan where I'm going to, like, sit through a picture and picker, picture and try to realize what's going no. on in this scene. No, um, it ain't happening. Let's move on to the Nick Wayne thing. So this was another attraction for this episode. This was promoted uh, heavily leading up to it on Kalina. <laughs> Here's the heel, Nick Wayne. With his mom, that Robert's a big fan of, our friend Robert. Um, so, uh, so Jim Ross is here trying to make this sound serious in front of these right. two. Very challenging scenario for Jim Ross, I must say. Mm -hmm. But he, he does pull this together. And Nick Wayne's mom too, which I don't even know her name. She's just called Nick Wayne's mom. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Have they said her name is? <laughs> But anyways, so she's trying to tell him, like, this isn't you. Come back to us. How could you do this? You know, Christian and Christian of all people. And uh, I think when uh, Nick Wayne re responds, do you remember what he says? That Christian is, uh, is his new father figure. He was a better father than, than our father ever was or my That's father. Right. And uh, Christian comes in and he's like, are you ready to go, son? And... Um, I think uh, let me let me find the clip. Oh, Nick Wayne oh, yeah, tells him, him as as they're leaving. Nick Wayne tells him you were a horrible mom growing up, and she slapped him. And then she yeah. was very upset about it. Tried to apologize, but uh, Nick Wayne said you're you're dead to me, and he leaves. And uh, Christian takes his son with him, and Christian says to her, uh, "You should have picked up the phone when I called." <laughs> so great acting. I'll give her a B. For this performance, um, I don't know about that. <laughs> I thought she was pretty not. It was not great. I wouldn't give her a B. But overall, this was an entertaining segment, though. So I can't uh, say. So it wasn't. right when they leave, they get jumped by Darby Allen. So Darby's right. out there, and uh, they they reveal that he's a uh, he's well. He laid out Christian. He's fighting with Nick Wayne, and they're gonna fight out to the ring, and they're gonna fight all the way out there. Nick Wayne's kind of laying it into Nick. No, Darby's laying it into Nick Wayne. Actually, busts his tooth, I think, unless it yeah, yeah. work somehow. But no, I think uh, they said he really by accidentally, yeah, something happened. So, so Christian Luchasaurus come in to save Nick Wayne, and uh, you know this. This I think. Oh, Sting, Sting is there too. So, uh, this is why I'm thinking Sting could be involved with these guys because obviously, sure, he's, he's already in, involved with them. Right, he's already involved. So uh, there's Nick Wayne, uh, fucking uh, <laughs> Riley and Kane, <laughs> looking, looking like dying this. over there. <laughs> oh my god! Well, he I, probably know, was. You know, I kind of like. It really hurts. <laughs> I kind of like Nick Wayne. I gotta admit, he's grown on me as a heel. Uh, the heel Nick Wayne. Uh, maybe, so, maybe. So Luchas, Luchasaurus has to help uh, Christian escape. The Scorpion right. Deathlock from Sting, and uh, they're gonna try to to leave. And poor, poor guy, poor poor Nick Wayne. He's like points at them. He's like, "What did you do to my son? What did you do to his tooth?" <laughs> <laughs> this is actually not bad. See, I'm thinking there was nothing on this dynamite because I I got a bad sense from it that I didn't enjoy it. But this was good. But this is not a whole. It's not a lot of it. This was kind no. of short, to be honest. But this was a good little segment so I'll, I'll give this a positive i'll give this a plus um you want to mention anything about this before i move on yeah I'll, i agree that this was probably i can't remember what else happens but this is probably the highlight of the whole thing that i remember this was it wasn't bad they had some sure i have some critiques but i mean jesus you know what this was definitely a highlight i guess 
Uh, up next is the main event: Rocky Romero versus Mystico. <laughs> I'm no, kidding. no, that's for the round. Ra- Jesus, that's for the round page show. All right, well, I'm sense. kidding. Don't that's sense. that's, don't that's hilarious. But okay, best friends are out here. This is probably a fucking shit promo too, man. Waste of time. Um, yeah. Statlander is gonna fight Willow, who I think yeah. is turning heel. It seems. Orange probably. Cassidy is gonna fight. I don't think he said he was gonna who. fight. Um, I think he know. just he, he just said that it, he said that it, this, this, he said that this title was more important to him than he realized because when he didn't have it he felt fucked up or whatever. So yeah, good. Let's go away. Oh, yeah, yep. I know. Okay. I, I'm, I'm not. I don't hate best friends like you do, but this was kind of a worthless waste of time. Um, yeah. Next week, Tony Khan has a gift for Sting. Oh Jesus Christ! Okay. okay. Uh, so next up is Rock Hard Juice Robinson. So he's in another match. Oh, he's in this. Is, yeah. This is the Battle Royal. Oh, this is the main man. event. The Battle Royal. Oh man. Main event. Yeah. Right. Okay. For the Dynamite Diamond Ring. I forgot about this, but the Acclaimed are here. They the major guys had ring walk entrances. Uh, M- MJF shows up to do commentary. Um, okay. So during the match, MJF shows up, gives uh, Dustin Rhodes oh, some money to low blow. Uh, Juice Robinson, so they actually that actually worked, and Juice, <laughs> Juice sold that really well. <laughs> great, great worker, man. Juice is a great worker. So that was a little moment where uh, MJF got a little victory on Juice after all the bullying. Um, Daniel Garcia not allowed to do his dance by Daddy Magic. It's just no fun, no fun. So, but Daniel Garcia did eliminate Jeff Hardy, and he eliminated. Dustin Rhodes, so no, but not a but all oh, right, Daniel not a bad Garcia showing, right. yeah. So not a bad showing from that's my guy. So I got to give him a shout out. Okay, he right. didn't, Good he thing. didn't, he didn't win this, but you know. And then uh, oh, he he does get a chance finally, and this was the biggest pop of the night. The crowd went insane to do the dance. It was like a fucking me. It was like whoa. <laughs> But anyways, uh, so I, I was happy to see the dance. I'm going to give the show some extra points because of that. I think we got to see that. But that's him getting eliminated. So the, the last few guys are Max Caster and Juice. I guess they're the last two. Oh, and then Jay White shows up to attack MJF. So this was this is significant. And this is weird, too. So look at this. I'm going to analyze this for you. Okay. Mm. Trying to get his belt back. So he's going to get him face down right there. So go get his belt. Right there. Just unstrap it and take it. And then instead he goes for what? Punching him in the face? Okay, this is yeah. awful. This And then he does get the belt. Okay. So he should have been more trying to get the belt right off the bat, to be honest. But uh, So he's going to try to hit him uh, with the belt, but he's going to get low blow. And he's going to lose the belt. So he had the belt for a split second. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and that was kind of that. And uh, Juice Robinson's in the ring. He's going to use the ring just like MJF does. And he's going to nail Max Caster with the left hand. I like how he throws that punch, you know. The left hand <laughs> of God. Yeah, I think he does that really well. Um, so he's going he's gonna to throw Max Caster out of the ring. And that's the end of the match. It's Brock Hart, Juice Robinson, just like we thought it was so going to be. He's going to face MJF. For the, yes. for the ring. Yeah. For the dynamite diamond ring. And I think there's a chance right. he'll win if MJF is really leaving the company. This is his last sure. chance to drop this ring. So um, is there anything afterwards? Anything after the match or no? Let me see what happened. Um, I MJF think there's just, just some, just some laying there. back and forth, some laying, people yelling at like MJF looking mad, saying that you're not going to beat me or whatever. I'm still going to win. And I don't know. Yeah, they're just yelling back and forth. All right, so we did it. We went through Collision and Dynamite. Yeah, I give Dynamite, and I was going to give it a bad grade, but I think there were some things on there that were okay. I'll give it a C, though. I liked Collision more because I think that Christian Danielson match was pretty top level. and yeah. uh, But the Dynamite, I think, was a lot. There was a lot more moments of why the fuck did they even have this? Why the fuck would you even have this? And um, so I'll be generous to give it a C just for the Nick Wayne thing with his mom 
uh, well, the first... some MJF stuff. Although I should I criticize the MJF stuff. It didn't make sense to me. But uh, right, right. I I don't know, man. Okay, I mean I might go C or C minus. I'm kind of in there somewhere. You go yeah. ahead. The fir- the first hour was really brutal. I remember I texted you and I said this is unbearable. And it I got better in the during- second hour. It got better. It did get better. It did. It did. I admit, but not to the point where it was good or anything, but just better than what we had been given the first hour, which was some of the worst things I've ever seen. Uh, I-, I guess I'd say that this was. I think it would sound par with. Uh, collision. They're both probably C minuses. They're just neither were like good, and they were both bad, but for different reasons. You know, just different reasons. There was enough there where it's not like a complete D or F, but definitely not good enough to be like good shows for sure. These were pretty bad shows. All you know, if you like, if you break it down like we just broke it down, yeah, these were pretty, pretty awful. All right. Well, that'll conclude our show today. Thank you for coming on, Vlad. I uh, we don't do these uh, dynamite collision reviews every time like we used to, but every once in a while we might. I guess we'll we'll do it that way. Most of the times though, we just kind of choose the major angles. Um, today, I guess I kind of felt like with uh, my mental situation and my life situation, I wanted a situation where I could rip on some AEW just just for fun, just for kicks. That's what just I do. Kicks. Get, I rip on wrestling just for fun. Hey, but look, if anyone from AEW happens to watch this ever, I hope you know this is just, you know, in jest. I'm very proud of you guys. You guys do a good job, okay? Good job. What? Good job getting the show out at least. You know what I mean? Okay, mm. you showed up to work. You know, you worked out. Oh, yeah. You know? <laughs> they showed up to work. They yeah. Six-figure, seven-figure salaries. What They work once or twice a week. Yeah, well, look, I know it's not easy. I, I We want it to be better, but this is what we yeah. get. This is what yeah, we get. Yeah. We get but what our, we get. 